Welcome gifted crafters and welcome to another session of Saturday Crafternoon. <laughs> I hope everyone's doing great today. I am tuning in from sunny South Florida and actually we've been having some really good weather lately. So I hope wherever you are tuning in from that you are nice and cozy and in your special fun place. I know I am right now in my craft room and it's my favorite place to be so first off i want to let you guys know if you don't know already today is january 30 i'm sorry january 21st and it is a pretty big holiday we've got a few things in here and I'm, i don't think a lot of people know about that so today is grandma's day if you didn't know that so for all of you grandmas out there Hey, give yourself a toot there. <laughs> it's also National Bakers, Crafters, and Makers Day. So look at that. So great day to be on the channel today talking about this stuff. It is also National Hugging Day. So give you guys a big, big hug from me to you and all the crafters out there. And thank you again for joining me today. So if you're tuning in for the first time, if you love sewing, knitting, crocheting, decoupage, embroidery, all kinds of crafts, uh, this is the perfect place for you. So I host weekly live sessions to talk about all kinds of crafts. So I'm really excited that you guys join me today and I'll be sharing a couple of my projects that I've been working on and I have a couple of things lined up for you. So congrats to all the grandmas out there. I see the chat's kind of exploding. I see we've got a couple of grandmas out there and this is great because I got a couple of things that you might be interested in showing for some of your grandkids. So let's just tune in and say hello to a couple of my friends that I see out there. Some crafters that we have out there. I see Crafting with Robin. I see Evimar, Evelyn. I see Judy Bauer, Nana 31331. I see Bariqua Sewing and Crafts. I see Robin Shiver. I see Shirley Dabney, Tammy Quick, Crafty Puerto Rican. Oh, wow. We got a few of you there. I, I don't know if I caught everybody in that chat, but if I didn't, I'm sorry. Um, but definitely we'll be talking back and forth um, throughout the day. So I hope you guys really enjoyed the trivia. So this is live number 26 and the trivia points have reset and we're, we are well on our way to now getting our top trivia master for the quarter. So you guys keep tuning in. We'll keep those trivia questions coming. And I hope you guys really enjoy that. You guys seem to, so I'm, I'm really happy about that. So don't forget at the end of the quarters, which will be the end of March, we'll be picking our top trivia master. And then we'll continue this every quarter. And at the end of the year, we'll find out who our top trivia champion is going to be. So I hope you guys really enjoy that. Okay, so let's just do a recap of what we talked about last week. So I shared with you guys a haul that I did at Hobby Lobby um, and also from the Dollar Tree. So if you haven't seen that, just kind of go back to live number 25 um, where I showed some of those items. We also talked about a knitted bag and we used the mattress stitch to finish that bag. And I did that knitted bag using my Addy machines. So as you guys know, I have the 46 pin and I recently got my little Addy 22 pin. Super cute, really love this machine and I've been making so many projects with it. I do also have the Centro machine. So I've been doing a lot of things with those and I'll be sharing some of those projects with you guys today. Okay, we also kind of talked about a little yarn explosion that I had, and I think I still have it around here somewhere. So if you guys recall, this is kind of the one thing you really don't want to happen to you. So this is with the little yarn explosion that I had. And I did order a yarn Swiffer and a yarn winder and it's, it was coming in from India, so I didn't expect to receive it, but I did get it. So I do have the box down here and I did open it up and it looks like it comes in a bunch of different pieces and you got to put it together. So 
I'm probably just going to try to do that this afternoon and I'll try to record it so you guys can see how I'm putting this together. But I'm super excited to get that put together so I can get this little yarn explosion, you know, fixed because we did make our, the knitted bag with this yarn and I'd love to make another one, but <laughs> I think I need to kind of fix this little problem first. So for all you knitters out there, I think you know what I mean when I say yarn explosion. I'm sure it's happened to many of us. And so I thought it was time to just get the tool so that I can keep myself organized on all my knitting crafts. So, okay, the other things we, we touched upon was we looked at some pom-poms um, and then we also talked about you know, a little bit more detail on the mattress stitch. Now I have to put something together for you guys. I did kind of try to show you, it was a little difficult to show you and I'm gonna have to kind of bring in my little camera so you can really focus in and see how the mattress stitch works. But it is a great stitch to learn when, especially when you're knitting um, items and you're trying to bring panels together or tubes together. Because what that stitch does is basically, it's like an invisible stitch it brings the panels or, or two pieces of yarn together and it just makes it look like they're side by side and they're not even connected and you can't see where you actually stitch it together so it's an absolutely great stitch I love it I use it a lot now on all of my projects so I'll be setting something up for you guys for that okay this week so we've got a couple of things that i did um i do have a little bit of an issue i probably have a little bit of a, an addiction to this yarn now <laughs> because i did there there was a sale and i did go out and i did got i got some more yarn so i am going to show you a couple more pieces that i got I just love the colors of the yarn and I had a project in mind that I wanted to do actually several projects in my mind when I went out to the store. So I thought, let me just get them all now and I don't have to go back out because they had a sale in Michael's and I think it was um, buy two, get one free or something like that. So I did go ahead and purchase those. So, and uh, there were also a couple of little things that people were posting on social media where yarn was at a ridiculously low price at like Walmart and some other places. So I did kind of go out and try to see if I can find some of those things. And I found some, but not at the price that they were saying, at least not in my areas. So maybe you guys were a little bit luckier than me. I don't know. But I'm going to show you just a couple of ones that I picked up. Um, these I think I showed you guys last week. I really can't remember. This is just the Mandela Ombre. And it's got some pretty colors on here. It's got some purples and lilacs. And, you know, I think this would make a really cute uh, purse for a little girl or a little sweater. You know, something that um, I can do that's a little girly. And then I have the I Love This Yarn where it's got some speckles on it so i actually really like that yarn i also got this one was a walmart brand these are it's a hundred percent acrylic all of these are actually let me just double check the mandala is yes a hundred percent acrylic as well as the i love this yarn these are all a hundred percent acrylic and they are a weighted at a number four so these are some of the ones that I was able to pick up. But this one, see, I've got, I even picked up the Red Heart Super Saver. A lot of people have issues with this yarn on their machine. I really haven't had any issues with my Addy. Um, I haven't tried it on the Centro that yet though, but there is a wax and there are little hacks that you can do with the wax and with um, dryer sheets that help the yarn along on your machine so they don't get into a tangled mess. So definitely those are some of the tips you can kind of share. And, and as I do the tutorials, I'll, I'll point those things out. Another Red Heart brand that I got, this is also a super saver. Um, this one is the color Rose. And I just thought it was really pretty because I'm gonna be doing um, a couple of things 
that are going to be more geared towards kids. So for all you grandmas out there, um, I've got something to show you that I've been working on. I was able to finish it this morning and I can just kind of show you what you can make for grandkids or kids, you know, just I, I think the kids would really love it. So I'll share that over with you. Now, another one that I got were these Karen cakes. These are blossom cakes. I really love the colors. I think they're really gorgeous, but I did pick up a couple of those. This one's also a blossom cake. Look at these colors. I mean, these are just really yummy. I love them. I can definitely make a really nice bag with that. Now, um, I'm going to share the bag. I did finish it, um, the knitted bag. Um, I also added a couple things to it um, just to kind of make it a little bit different and give it a little bit more security on it. So I will share that with you, but I'm thinking of making another one and I'm thinking one of these Karen cakes is probably going to be the perfect match for the bag that I'm looking for. I do want to make it a little bit longer, see if I can do a tote with it. Um, and I'll try to put like the patterns together for you guys that are interested and get those out to you. See, I've got another Karen cake and I like these colors as well. They're, these are all blossom cakes. I know Karen did come out with a new line. Um, I haven't picked it up yet, but I've seen some pictures of it and they look gorgeous. But these yarns, I mean, they are so soft. I I, I love the Karen. These, this, it's by Yarnspirations, but I just love it. I think it is so, so soft and if you're gonna make a blanket or even any type of knitted item, I mean, it just, it's like butter. It, it's really, really nice. I really love the way it feels, the texture of it. A lot better than, of course, the acrylic. The acrylic, you know, has that little bit of roughness to it. This one is just, it's like a little, I don't know, soft little cloud. It's just so, so good. Love it, yummy. <laughs> Okay, one of the other things I wanted to pick up, and I don't know if you guys are aware that they are available. They do have, and this is Lion's brand, they do have yarn that is skin tones. So if you're looking to make little animals, little bears, little dollies, things like that, they do sell the skin tones. And I did use a couple of these when I was doing my project from this morning. So. This is, this color is actually called Nutmeg and it is a uh, number four. Then you can see here that the yarn is pretty, pretty flush. It is number four. It doesn't have a lot of that, you know, fr frizz, I guess you want to call it. And it worked really well with the machine. I really liked the way it went through the machine. So I was really happy about that. But definitely, you know, if you're looking into doll making or things like that, these types of skeins are really nice um, and they give you a lot of variety depending on what it is you want to make. So a couple of the other things that I picked up. This is just a mainstay. This was some acrylic yarn that I got just kind of like for the Valentine colors. I think I picked that one up the week before. But similar to the skin tones from lion's brand i was able to pick up from yarn lane this is impeccable and this color is called chocolate and this would be a great color like if you're doing teddy bears or things like that it's a nice dark color it is pretty soft and it does go very smoothly on your machine. I use this both on the Addy as well as on the Centro and they both performed really well. So if you're looking for specific types of yarn that work well with your machines, um, these that I have here work pretty well with the exception of the Red Heart. Sometimes people struggle with that one on the Centro, but I have used them. And like I said, there's hacks that are out there that'll help it along. So you may want to kind of look out for those types of things. So then I picked up some other fun colors that I thought would be really nice for the upcoming season. And this color is called Arbor Rose. I thought it was really pretty and I can see myself doing something really girly for this. And I have a couple kids in mind 
that I'm going to be doing this for. So definitely a fun one for me to do. And let me just move it. Like I said, I had a pretty, I have a problem. <laughs> I have a pretty big yarn haul. I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> This is another skin tone, and this one is called Mahogany. Very nice. It's, it's this lion's brain. Of course, this is a number four as well. I think all of the ones that I got are a number four. I wanted to kind of keep it as the same weight. I did get, I love this yarn. I think I had this one last week. I like the colors on it. This is 100% acrylic as well. And this one is called Impeccable, and this one is a soft rose. I thought this would be really pretty to do a little blanket with. I just like the softness of the color, you know? So yeah, I, it's a little crazy. I know it kind of looks like a lot, but you know, when you're going through these projects, like I can eat up this whole thing in a day. Like it, it really just goes really fast. So I'm going to show you a project that I made and it didn't even take the full scheme and I'll show you what was left over as well. So let me just show you a couple of more that I have. So this is another skin tone one and this one is called Nutmeg. And then here's an impeccable yarn by Yarnspirations. And this one is called Heather. So I've got kind of some light, some darks, some dusty roses. And then I kind of like the beiges and, and you know, crazy colors so that I can make things that kind of pop. So I really like those. I did pick up a couple more. And again, these were... Um, more holiday type related. So I've got this impe impeccable yarn as well. This is again, this is from Yarn Lane and this one is called Butterscotch, which I thought would go really pretty with the girly theme that I'm thinking of. So I'm gonna see if I can mix up some of these yarns together to do like a little blanket. And I think that will work out nice. And it's almost kind of like quilting with yarn. So you're like trying to design things and changing up the colors of the yarns and doing different designs on the machine. And it, you know, requires a little bit of kind of planning ahead of time. You gotta think about how you're gonna plot this and where you're gonna put the yarn in so that it kind of comes out the way you want. Or you can do like several different squares and then just kind of build the blanket together that's another way of doing it so there's so many different ways it's just crazy but like i said i i went a little crazy yes i've got all this yumminess all the yarn absolutely love it <laughs> i know i probably have a problem but you know yumminess really fun for all you knitters out there yeah i i i think i've got a lot to do now for my projects so <laughs> <laughs> definitely was a lot of fun so what am i doing with all of this yarn am i crazy or what <laughs> let me just show you i'm gonna put these kind of back in the bag so i can show you a couple things that i've made and just don't mind the little ruffle of the bag i know it gets a little noisy but I'm trying to do this quickly let's get all of this out of the way yeah, I'm definitely going to be needing that yarn swifter and the yarn winder because we've got a lot of yarn. And, you know, my craft room's getting a little crowded. So I've got to be careful with that. <laughs> All righty. So let's go. Let's talk about the first project. So um, the first thing that I did was let's see if I can find it here now. I made, and this was with the Addy 22, I made little bows. So these bows are super easy to make. And I made this with the Addy 22. Now, all this is, 
is a couple of rows and then kind of cinched in the middle. But there's just so many things that you can do with this, you know. And let me just show you a couple of things that I did. So if you guys remember, I made this waffle stitched hat. So um, if you recall, when we talked about the hat, you know, I, I always said it kind of needed something, you know, it was kind of plain, at least for me. So what I did was I attached a bow to it. I went ahead and made the bow and then I just kind of stitched it in and I just kind of plopped it anywhere. I mean, you can put it on the top, on the side, you know, wherever you want. I just kind of wanted to give it that little look and it kind of just changed how the whole hat looked like the whole I don't know, the whole definition of the hat changed. I really like the way it looks with that. And I thought, what a great idea to be able to put, you know, on the hats and, you know, for the little girls and stuff. I thought that would be super, super cute. But then I kept thinking, well, what else can you make with the bow? And with the bow, there's so many things that you can do. So I do have a kit that I had from a couple of years ago. Um, and this was um, on bow making, so like making bows. So I remember I got it from Amazon. I don't remember how much it was. It's kind of old, but I'm sure they're out there. And these are just little kits on how to make bows. And so it comes with all these faux leather little bows that you can make, you know, and all the accessories that you need to do it. And then it has these clips. Now, I'm sure that you can get these clips anywhere. You can probably just buy a bag of clips, but look what happens when I just put the bow on the clip. Like literally I could just tie this to the, to the um, clip here and you can have yourself a little hair clip with a bow on it. Really cute. It's like that would be really cute for a little girl, you know, and then the other thing you can put it on is like on a headband. So one of the things I did kind of, um, let's see if I have one here. I kind of played with it, but I, I, I didn't kind of finish it too much, but this is, this could be like a headband that you could make on the knitting machine. And I think this one, I used the 46 needle machine. And so you could make that and then put the bow on it, you know, so little bows for the little girls, you know, super cute something that you can make really easy you know and you don't have to do the same color you can mix and match i think i had another one here these are kind of like my unfinished projects that i was playing around with oh here's another bow you know so you can kind of just mix and match them you know change them around put them on hair clips put them on hats i mean there's so many things that you can do with them and I thought this, this little bow didn't take me more than 10 minutes to do. I mean, it was super quick and you can put it on pretty much anything knitted. You can even add it to a bag. There's so many things that you can do with it. So I was like, wow, these little bows, they don't take much to do. And yet they change, you know, the look of something completely and you can really personalize it. So I thought, you know, I would share that with you guys. Um, definitely something that, you know, you guys can do if you guys have the knitting machines. I know a few of you guys were looking into getting them. So, you know, these are some of the things I made. Now, the other thing that you can make with these, and I know I shared these before, you guys have seen the little booties, right? So what, look what happens, I'm trying to find, here, here we go. Look what happens when I add the bow to the booty. You know, really cute. I kept saying that how plain looking it looked, but you add a little bow to it. And there you go. I mean, really cute for a little girl to do a little photo shoot or something or little booties for her to just be at home. You know, really, really cute. I think that's something that really doesn't take long to do at all. The booties didn't take long and the bows certainly didn't take long. And then you can just kind of attach it or you can put it on the side. I mean, they're sewn on the front. You know, you can do so many different things with these. So I thought these were really cute. 
So let me just check the chat because I see a lot of things going on here and I don't know if you guys have any questions. Please type it into the chat and I'll try to help out wherever I can. Let's see. Robin says, I used to knit and crochet, but haven't in a few years. Oh, <laughs> gotta get back into it, Robin. <laughs> I like to mix things up. So like this is, you know, we're in winter time. So I like to do a lot of knitting and crocheting around the winter time. And then I'm probably going to switch it up. You know, we're going to be hitting spring soon. And so I might get into like quilting and sewing. And, you know, I, I like to kind of just keep up with as the seasons change you know all the different new trends that are happening and all the different crops so i like to kind of just pick up things and change it up so you know i'm still on my little knitting adventure and you know i i like to learn as i go and and find out new things and i'll just share those tips with you guys but definitely you know change it up robin <laughs> let's see i see my hubby just got more a more added to his honey-do list. Uh-oh. <laughs> Let's see. Yvonne's... Oh, Yvonne from California. Hey, thanks for joining. <laughs> Let's see. Be sure to click the like button. Oh, thank you, Tammy. I appreciate that. If you guys like the video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I'm going to be doing a couple more tutorials. They're going to be more knitting related because that's kind of what I'm into right now. But definitely we'll be posting some more for you guys. Let's see. One minute tip says bow here, bow there, bows everywhere. <laughs> Nancy, you have a new business. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jeanette gets a lot of hats from Nancy. It's that time of the year. Yep, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> you just love making things by hand. I do. I really enjoy. I mean, for those of you guys who don't know, um, you know, we've got a crafting family. You know, my... My mom does a lot of crocheting and she's been crocheting, well, since she was like a teenager. I mean, it, it's crazy. And I've shared, I have a video out there. I've shared a lot of the projects that she's made like over the years. And she's got so many projects out there that she's handmade and they're absolutely gorgeous. So, you know, I thought, you know, why not learn it, right? definitely you want to keep that trend so she does a lot of crocheting i like the crocheting and the knitting we also do embroidery my sister does um embroidery she's got her channel barica sewing and crafts if you haven't checked that out so you know we are just a crafting family we just love to do all types of crafts i love cooking i do a lot of gardening so um, one of the things i did do this week was uh we have the pineapple plants that i've shared with you guys before so we kind of repotted them because they did get bigger so we got them in some bigger pots and then we also um, have our mango uh, tree that's in a pot so it's a dwarf mango so it will not be a huge tree and it is in a pot so we're hoping we get some mangoes pretty soon from that and it's starting to kind of flower so excited about that you know i i like to do all kinds of things you know with my hands so i guess yeah that's that's me <laughs> all righty so those are the bows and that's just a couple of ideas you can do you know you got the hats you got the booties you can do headbands you can do hair clips just all kinds of stuff that you can make with that so that's just one of the items that I made. Now, another item that I was able to finish, and we talked about this last week. So I showed you guys the knitted purse. And so on here, we've got the knitted purse. I was able to finish it. And I did kind of change it up a little bit. I did put the tag here. I did the waffle stitch cinching this all together so you see on the front and on the back that is a waffle stitch so it makes it very smooth and very difficult for you to be able to see where the panels begin and end but this is actually one tube uh, i believe it was about i don't know between 110 maybe 120 rows on the machine and once you have that tube, you know, do a couple of folds and then you do your waffle stitch. And then we made the handle. And when I attached the handle to the bag, what I wanted to do was add something a little bit extra to it. So I did use this. Let's see here. And this is kind of 
really, really old. I've had this for a long time. Um, it's just when my daughter was into like beads and stuff, it's like a little kit where you have like all the little beads. And I had quite a few in here, as you can see. And what I did was I added these beads to the bag and I just kind of put them on the handle. So you could see that here. So all I did was, you know, put that on here and then it kind of gave it a little bit more security for me because I was a little worried that, you know, just having that stitch here holding the handle and the bag was not going to be enough. So I wanted to add it some more security. I did put the bead in here and then wrapped it within the bead as well. But I think that it worked out pretty well. So let me know what you guys think of the bag. I mean, I thought it came out really cute. And I'm going to be making a couple of more, but I want to switch up the design. One of the things that I'm not too crazy about it is, it, you know, it kind of flops open. I mean, it is knitted, so you can see the inside. And let me just adjust it so you guys can see the whole thing here. See, so that's the inside of the bag. The thing is, when you hold it, you know how it kind of flops open. So, like for security and stuff, you know, I, I wouldn't want somebody to like lose anything important. So I'm probably going to add a little snap here just so it can kind of secure. The other thing you can do is you can get some fabric and just line the inside of the bag and maybe even do a zipper. So... Uh, you know, you can do a number of different things. And this is why I think I'm going to change up the bag and just kind of square it and make it with a flap coming over, almost like a wallet. So I think I'm going to do that. And then I have the beads here on the sides to give it that little extra flare. And I did add the little knitted tag. So hope you guys like that. Let me just give you a close up of it so you can see. And you can see where the mattress stitches and how, you know, I got the two panels together. If you can see how that mattress stitch works, you know, it's almost like an invisible seam that pulls it together. So definitely nice, nice stitching. So um, I see a couple of things on the chat. One of the questions is, do I do a tote bag? I haven't done it yet, but... It would be pretty pretty much the same concept for this it would just be more rows so it would be a deeper bag so that's definitely something that you know you can do is do a deeper bag just by adding more rows um, but one thing you're going to want to think about when you're doing that or changing designs around you have to think about the the reinforcement that you're going to have on the handles themselves because at some point you are going to need to attach this handle to the actual bag and you don't want it to be like the weak part of the bag because think about what you're putting in the bag it's especially if it's going to be a tote bag it's going to be pretty heavy so the weight of those items are not only going to stretch the yarn out but um, you won't see it so much on this one because it is double knitted, but if you did not do a double knit bag, you would actually see the holes open and you would be able to see, you know, in the bag and things might actually even fall out like little pens and things, sharp things that can kind of go through. So you do want to be careful with that in terms of the weight. But if you decide to do the tote bag and have it a little bit bigger, you want to reinforce the handle to make sure it can support that type of weight but you'll also want to make sure that you double knit it and you may still also want to add the lining on the inside just to kind of give it that reinforcement but you know they're knitted bags so you know they are pretty sturdy i mean i kind of all of my projects i i use my projects i like to make them very very you know usable because <laughs> what's the point right i don't want it just sitting on a shelf somewhere so i definitely use mine to the ground but definitely something you can do and you can put together you just have to think about the design itself okay let's see 
Um, I see a couple of questions out there. I love the way the bag came out. I'm stealing that when I visit next time. <laughs> That's from my sister. Yeah. Let's see. Robin says, turned out really pretty. Let's see. Does Miss Nancy have some type of portal to Hobby Lobby or something? I wish. <laughs> I had a bit of a car problem. So, you know, we, we had some car issues, but I'm glad I made it to Hobby Lobby right before that happened. So <laughs> let me just show you one more thing. And this is something that my daughter got this long time ago and she still has it this is from claire's so it's a knitted bag or or kind of a knitted bag right and i just want to kind of give you guys an, an example of how you can incorporate you know the knits with other types of hardware that are out there that would maybe help reinforce that bag so she's got like little things in here but you could see the knit on here it is knitted and then what they did is cinch the hardware here you do have the loops and you can get these hardware items from amazon you know they have a zipper on here you can see it's lined here's that claire's logo here and it also has let me see it doesn't have a zipper but here's the lining that's on here this is very easy to do you can line your bags and then it's kind of attached within the zipper. So the lining is falling underneath here. And then you have like this faux leather type stitch on the top that goes across. And that's what's kind of securing the zipper and keeping the knit as well as the lining all together. So this is where this piece here becomes super important and if you kind of feel it it is a little bulky because you've got a lot of weight on there if you think about it you've got the zipper you've got the knit you've got the lining on the inside then you are top stitching as well as doing a stitching to your zipper so a lot of things going on here causes a lot of bulk but it is necessary to be able to secure the thing together so it doesn't fall apart so kind of use this as my um, I guess inspiration of how I would now take my knitted bag and make it into a workable bag where I can really put some heavier type items in here that would really be secure and I wouldn't have to worry about things popping out or you know the handles breaking off or things like that so those are the types of things that when you're designing types of bags and things you're going to want to think about as you are creating these things so this specific bag it's a really simple bag and and this i could i could easily see it being done if you have a circular knitting machine or you can even hand knit them yourselves and this one just has a small pocket here in the front as well as on the top so definitely something that you know i'm going to be looking into is making more purse type items and then incorporating the hardware with it to make it a more sturdy usable bag that you guys can use for everyday use so let's see, I have a few people out here. Uh, let's see, Annette says, if you line that, it would give it more stability. Exactly, Annette. Yeah, if you line it, it does give it more stability. And then, you know, you have that comfort that things are not gonna fall out. Even though this is double knitted, you know, you have sharp eye objects like pens and things like that that can poke out and you don't want that to happen. So having the lining inside does give it that extra security. Preston Polish says, I love my central. I started machine knitting in October just as a fun fall activity and I'm obsessed now. I am too. <laughs> I got an ultimate sweater machine last month so I can play with bigger projects. Nice. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure that, you know, there's just so many things you can make. It's not just the circular knitting machines. You have the other machines that are out there too, or even you can just hand knit. There's just so many projects that you can make from little kitty items to purses to blankets, you know, to even pillow covers. I mean, you can go crazy with this stuff. I mean, and there's so many beautiful yarns out there to try. You know, I've got so many more that I want to try. I'm looking now for more specialty type yarns. 
and I want to dabble on different things as well. So definitely share with us what you guys have made. So Prushed and Polished, I'd be interested to see what you guys made out there. If you can put it on our Facebook group, Gifts HQ USA, go ahead and drop it in there so we can check out your projects because we like to share each other's projects and give little tips and stuff for that. All righty, let's see. One Minute Tip says that he got Central from, from her husband as a gag gift <laughs> and to get him a new hobby. <laughs> and that man is now cranking while watching TV. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. You know that, and that's something that you can do, although you need to watch it because I had an issue with my hair, believe it or not. <laughs> A little story on that. I was knitting on the machine, and you know, you can you for the adding machines they have the clamps, so you can clamp them onto the table. And so I wasn't paying attention, and I was my head was kind of turned this way. And you gotta wear a scrunchie when you have long hair, <laughs> because my hair got caught into the machine and it was going, and all of a sudden I felt a tug, and I was like, ow! And, it literally knitted my hair. So be careful with that, guys, because that hurt. I was kind of like, wow, I wasn't paying attention. I, I got into the movie that I was watching and I was sitting there cranking and, you know, and I had the, the clamps on the machine and it was cranked down and my head was turned and this thing was just taking my hair. So, yeah, that hurt. I could tell you that. So now I know when I knit, I need to, you know, bun sisters, gotta put the bun in, you know, gotta keep the hair out of the way because that hurts. It was one of those, you know, crafts that was like a ouch. And then I had to go and make sure, you know, I didn't have hair in my, my knitted items. So I was like, oh, but yeah, definitely. If you have long hair, keep it out of the way. You don't want that happening to you. <laughs> But yeah, that was one of my little oops <laughs> moments. So, you know, <laughs> anyway, so that was um, the bag that I wanted to show you and different, you know, different ideas on when you're thinking about creating things. So let me get to something else that I really wanted to show you. And I thought it was so much fun. And I don't, for you guys who have grandkids out there, let me try to close this. It's not closing for me here. For the ones with grandkids out there, something really cute that I made, at least I think it's cute, <laughs> is this little bear. So this little bear was done on my Addy machine. I didn't do it on the Central, I did it on the Addy, but you can do it on the Central too. I just started it with that. And this is what he looks like. Let's see here. So here's the little bear. I think he came out really cute. And for little kids, I mean, I loved it. I was like, oh my gosh, I could give these to, you know, I have a couple friends that just had babies and stuff. So I was like, oh my God, this is so, so cute. And let me just show you something. If you take that little bow that we were talking about, you can put it on the top and make it a little girl bear. <laughs> Or you could put it here on the neckline and make it a little boy bear. <laughs> or you can just kind of put it anywhere, you know, because that's another thing you can do with the bow. You can put it on an ear, you know, I mean, super cute ideas. I love the little girl one. I was like, oh, how cute is that? <laughs> but super, super cute. I loved making these. Um, there's a couple of videos that are out there on how to make this. Now, I didn't follow any one person to make it. I kind of just made my own. Um, some of the stuff I did from one person and then I kind of didn't like how they did the other steps because they were like knitting the little snout and stuff. And I didn't want to have to hand knit. I wanted everything to be done from the machine. So everything that's on here was entirely done on the Addy. 46 pin needle machine and then also on the small Addy, which is my 22 pin needle machine. And 
and between the two machines i was able to do everything but if you don't have the smaller machine then you can hand knit it i just wanted to make it to be 100 percent like on the machine um, so i did do the arms the ears and the snout on the 22 pin and then i did make the body the head and there's an inside um head to this and those were done on the 46 pin needle machine so you know i did do a double layer on the head because one thing it's got some polyfill on the head and when you stretch out the stitches i didn't want the stuffing to show so i did an inner head and an outer head and that prevented that so i kind of really liked how that came out but all the other pieces here super super simple i did add a little tag on here and it says made with love let me just give you guys a close-up of me because i think he's really cute <laughs> here's the bottom you can see here yep going the wrong way here And they've got his ears and he's got his little neckline. But I think he came out really, really cute. And I'm like, for those of you who have grandkids, you know, they like to have their little dollies and their snuggies. And this is one thing that, you know, you can throw it in the wash and everything because it's, you know, it's knitted. And it didn't take me all that long to make this. You know, you once you whip out all the pieces, which doesn't take long at all, the hardest part was just I lining things up. So like I once I finished making the body and the head and I put those pieces together, I added the arms and just making sure that they're symmetrical to each other and then putting the ears in and I put the snout and then I added the eyes and the nose. So all of that was just, you know, knitted together and you can do so many things with this concept. It doesn't have to be a bear. Like I, I wanted to put together a bunny, but I didn't have time, but um, that's probably gonna be my next project because I have a little girl that I wanna get a bunny out to. So definitely, you know, if you can do a bear, you can do a bunny, you can you can change it up and not do these ears if you have the basic body with the head and the arms you know you don't have to put the snout you can make it any animal that you want they have little doggies they have bunnies they have all kinds of stuff and you can make something really really cute and for all of you guys that are out there that you know have your etsy shops and stuff you know you may want to try to do something like this to sell um, the other thing you can do is you can, besides putting like bows or things to make it unique, you can maybe try to do some type of patch embroidery on here, or you can do little shirts or little designs. You can do like a, a out of fabric, like have little shirts with their names and stuff on it, and then kind of dress up the bear and you can sell it customized like that. So there's so many different things that you guys can do for those of you who have those Etsy shops out there. These are just some of the ideas, you know, that you can do when you're selling out in your shops. So let's see, I'm going to check here a couple of things going on. Uh, you hooked us, you hooked us with the bows and now pulled us in with the bear. <laughs> <laughs> great and crafty with robin says that's cute yeah and crafty with robin i know you can make this i know you went ahead and got the machine um i did see your video on it so if you guys haven't seen her channel you go ahead and check it out because it's a neat little channel she did get the machine and this is something that you can definitely make you know this this is really easy to do you know it does just Need, it needs you to kind of do all the rows you know you don't need to have like big embroidery skills or knitting skills to do this you know the waffle stitch is something that's really easy to do that's what you would cinch the arms together um, similar to how you would do a booty and then the same with the ears it's just a matter of cinching it once you've taken it off of the machine the little eyes they're just two little stitches and then the nose is just kind of an embroidery stitch going across so it really doesn't take very much to learn how to do these things so 
definitely something, you know, the kids would enjoy it. You know, I could see things like this. If, if you're into charities and stuff, you can, you know, bring it to like a hospital for the little kids. You know, there's just so many things that you can make with these. Let's see. Ever <laughs> Evelyn says this bear is adorable. Thank you. <laughs> Judy said it would be an adorable bear hat for kids. Yes, that's another thing. You know, I cinched this together, but you don't have to cinch it. It is a tube. So if you were to do this as a double knit, I don't think I would do it as a single knit because it would probably show the holes. But yeah, think about that. You know, this could be a hat right here. If you could think, kind of picture it this way. You know, so this could be a hat on their head. Really cute. <laughs> so many things you can make. Let's see. Uh, Marion says, he is so cute, Nancy. You could also make him a puppet. Yeah, that's the other thing. If you don't cinch it here, you can leave this open. Now, I cinched it because I wanted to kind of, you know, seal it and I put the tag here but definitely something that you can do is puppets you know little beanie hats that if you leave it open there's the other things that you can add here like you can just add this to a bag or something you know and just you know put things now other things that i've seen that people do um when you're building the bear and you're doing the especially the inner head not this outer there's another head that's inside that gives it that double knit right so when you're doing the inner head some people will buy these little um i don't know exactly what they're called they're like little gadgets that have like the little rattles they're like little noise makers so they do sell those and so this would be like a little rattle and it would make the noise when you kind of shake it or you can get one of those little recorders where you could record your voice and maybe they just squeeze it and it would say something. And I think like if you if you know Build-A-Bear, I'm sure they have tons of those. When you go to those Build-A-Bear places, they've got the little noisemakers. They've got the little, you know, um, recorder things and things like that. So something, you know, for the grandmas out there, you know, if they you want to record something, you know, it, it can be prayer bears. So if you want to record, you know, saying a prayer to someone, you can do that and put them inside their head. And so they would meet, either press it and it would activate it. Or if it's a rattle, you know, you can shake it and you would hear it. So really cute things that you can make with that. Now, just on those little items that you put, since you are double knitting it inside the head, it, it's a lot safer. Um, I'm a little worried about and one of the reasons I did not want to do buttons for the eyes or they do sell the little eyes that you can purchase and snap them on just for safety because this was for a really small child I didn't want to do that I wanted everything to be knitted so I definitely wanted to keep it you know safe for the kids but they do have those other gadgets out there so if that's something that you would prefer to do rather than embroidering the eyes and and those types of things you can purchase those through amazon but definitely you know you want to just be on the lookout for that you know depending on who you are gifting this to you know just be really careful with those things now those noise makers they would go inside the inner head so it would be double knitted, so it would be pretty safe inside. It's no way of it getting out because it is um, inside a little ball with the polyfill. And then there's another knit on top. And then we also have the cinch underneath. So no way of it coming out other than then them breaking the yarn and getting it out themselves. But that's just to keep it safe for the little ones. You know, I think that, you know, it's pretty cute. So let me just see. I think I got everything that I wanted to show you guys. Um, I did make one more thing, which was like a little, this is part of the snout. So when I made the snout on the machine, and you can see it's just something that I just cinched here in the middle, just like you would if you were doing a beanie. And then I cinched the outer part until I got the circle that I wanted. So these little dollies, what I was thinking of is you could take, you could take the booties and do something like this and kind of create like a little flower almost. So you see how that kind of changes the whole look of it? 
and you can change these up with different colors of yarn and just create the flower and you can again you can put them on booties on beanies on headbands on hair clips hats you know there's just so many things you can do with them but just you know these little tiny things can really go a long way and change the look of something you know you can even just add it on top if you want to you want to have the bow with something underneath i mean ignore like the yarn but see what this does like it just changes the whole look of it you know it just makes it a different presentation so you can play with the colors you know things like that you can do the little flag bears you know with the different flag colors that are out there you know so definitely something that you know you can kind of play with and i'm sure that you'd have fun doing it too <laughs> so i see a lot of people on the chat let's see annette says could you show us a demo on how to make something on the knitting machine definitely um i have a couple of things out there on youtube annette check out my channel um i did make a couple of things on the knitting machine i've got some more that i'm i'm in the middle of editing and trying to get out i did make the infinity scarf that was one of the items um i believe the santa hat was out there and i can't remember some of the other videos that are out there but check out the channel to see there's a couple things that i'm posting all the time I'm I, there's so many that i'm trying to get out um but i'm trying to edit it and you know i sometimes i have to kind of re-record because i want you guys to really truly see what i'm doing so i try to position the camera as best as i can um, to get that out to you. Okay, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Marion says, leave out the stuffing for the puppet. Yes. <laughs> Robin says, I have no one to help me record. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not easy, you know, but you can get the stands and there's other things that you can do to help you. I, I have my little nut cam. I don't know if you guys have seen my nut cam. This is what I used, um, and I have it kind of attached. <laughs> so I have my little, um, my little nutcracker from Christmas, and he's holding on to one of my cameras here. And I like this camera because this is the one that I can kind of position really close so you guys could really see what I'm doing. So, you know, that's just one of the ones that I use, you know, and that kind of helps me. I don't have that extra person, but I got the little cameras and you can kind of position them in different places so that you can record better. Alrighty, so I know that we are a little over on our time. So let me just check to see if I have any final questions out here. <laughs> I see a few people chatting on, yeah, <laughs> on the cameras and on, on the yarn. That's awesome. Awesome. Looks like you guys definitely enjoy some of the projects that I shared with you today. Now, I'll try to get these tutorials out to you as soon as I can. But um, I think that was everything that I had to show you today. So I really hope you guys enjoyed today's session and don't forget if you like the video please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and go ahead and hit the subscribe button and tune in for some of my other items that will be coming up so if you haven't seen any of my tutorials go ahead and keep watching because you can see a few of the items that i've made with the centro and the adding machine so definitely hope you guys have a great day and a great weekend and enjoy grandma's day <laughs> and i hope to be crafting with you guys soon thank you everyone bye bye